All right. Hi, everybody. Let's quickly wait until a few people come in here. Come on. Does it start the event? I think the event starts. Hey, everybody. Just quickly post in the chat so I know that everything's live. Yeah. All right. Good. I think LinkedIn is working and YouTube as well. Yeah. And today I thought I'd do a quick stream about the data engineering cookbook that I have. So about the cookbook, I created the cookbook. I don't know how long a time ago, four years or something, right? It's, it's very, very old. Um, yeah, but it, it, people like it. It has 10,000 stars on GitHub, 2000 forks. So people like it. You can find this. I put, if you're on YouTube, I put the link below to the cookbook. You can read it either directly on cookbook, cook, uh, on GitHub, or I think we have, a, or we have also this other visualization here. So what was my original intention with the book? The original in intention was to give people a, yeah, a quick start, a quick introduction into uh, data engineering, how to become a data engineer. I started this before I even, uh, before I even had my academy. I just did this for fun. And I actually want to make this uh, great again, because the cookbook is fairly old right now. I don't know when the last update was two years or something ago was the last update or three years, even three years. So I need to do a bit, uh, a bit about that. Hey, Pavan. Hello. Could you please share a link to the update cookbook? Uh, go to cookbook.learndataengineering.com. That's the, that's where the cookbook lives. I can't, unfortunately, I can't post links in the live stream on LinkedIn. So cookbook.learndataengineering.com. That's where the cookbook lives. So the idea with this is to, to teach data engineering, to give people an introduction to it, to send people the right way to learn this. It's, in the last years, data engineering has a lot of stuff that actually turned around or changed, right? Because three years ago or four years ago, Hadoop was a bit nicer or was a bit more in demand. Nowadays, Hadoop isn't that big anymore. The cloud was, was is getting more and more strong. So I have a lot of changes. I actually made a list of the changes. I want to go through with with you through these changes because I think that's interesting for you um, what actually I think should be changed here. So let's quickly before we do uh, get a few questions uh, here. Is DevOps skills obligated for data engineering work in the cloud? If yes, how DevOps be good if we work with managed server services? Well, so DevOps is, I think DevOps is important also for engineers. I uh, talked about this yesterday on the live stream. It's important. It's also important for serverless because if you run a serverless uh, environment, let's say you run uh, AWS Lambda, you need to have DevOps. You need to have your, have your, um, yeah, your, how should, you say, how should I call this? Your, your process of developing software, then putting this into production and then operating it and doing bug fixes and so on and how to how to switch our switch our code or update code and stuff. So that's it's still it's still very relevant for this. I'm actually not sure. Do I have something about DevOps in the cookbook? I'm actually I don't know. Actually don't know. So DevOps, yes, of course. Uh Pawan, hello Andreas. Appreciate all the work you do. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Yeah, screen is visible. Okay. So let's quickly jump into the cookbook and talk about how this is set up. How I set this up was I had these different modules 
or, or, or chapters in the cookbook. First, the introduction chapter, basic skills, advanced skills, hands-on course that I actually never finished, case studies, best practices for cloud. I think this needs to be renamed. Data sources, where you actually can find a lot of good data, interview questions, and books and courses. So that's how I, how I ordered this. Now, let's quickly look through here the introduction. Introduction, what is this cookbook? Of course, it's general data engineer versus data scientist. Um, also with machine learning workflow model, uh, machine learning models and data. And then my platform blueprint that I use for a long time. I updated it a bit, but it's still, I still use that today because it's still very valid and who companies need. So I made the list here, what I think should be changed. Um, Jordan, too long text intro. That's something um, I want to change. And also something that actually is here, remove the machine learning topics and make this introduction less data scientist or data science heavy. The thing is in this, as you see here, I start with the cookbook to explain what this is. And then I immediately jump into data engineer versus data scientist. But my view has changed a lot in the recent years. I was always saying like, okay, you have data science as the umbrella. And then below you have the scientist and you have the engineer. And without engineering, there's no data science. This is still valid. But I don't think these, this comparison, this direct comparison is actually needed or actually okay. So that's something that I actually, I think I want to remove. I'm not, let me quickly close this window. I don't know what you think. What's your impression on this? Um, is it interesting for people to see or first get a introduction in the difference between the scientist and the engineer? I know the scientist is something people know and people understand, but like I think this should be more more towards um, engineering, right? What is important to have data architect if data engineering know how to choose the best services of pipeline to solve clients needs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think architect, uh, architect is a subcategory of the engineer, right? So yeah, but I, I would start here with engineering, but the, you're right. The goal, the ultimate goal is to solve, build pipeline, solve problems for, for clients. That's the, that's the ultimate goal here. Um, are we covering Delta Lake data governance topics? No, in this, that's something that needs to go in there. Um, Delta Lake data governance. I actually put this here on my list. Let me put this here. Let's put this. Let's put it here. Delta Lake. Data governance. That's something that actually needs to go in there. Yeah. So I want that, to. That's a that's a good a good idea here. Data science is almost dead. The concept of citizen data scientist has poisoned the teams. Data science is not dead, and data scientist is not dead. There's so much data science work and a space for good data scientists. I don't, I don't see this. I don't see this. The citizen data science scientist. Ah, I, I don't know. It's show me, show me a good definition of this and, and yeah, how this, how this works. So I want to focus here on the blueprint. I have the blueprint. First, I have these whole data scientists and then uh, machine learning workflow stuff. I don't know if I keep this machine learning workflow stuff here, machine learning model data, because as I said, the, the engineer is not directly connected to science. So you can, 
you can have data engineering without having machine learning and machine learning models and so on. So I don't want to give people the the impression that this is this is so closely connected, right? So most likely that's why I wrote this here. Uh, remove or move the machine learning topics. I think that needs to go somewhere else. That needs to go somewhere else. And where do I have my blueprint here? Also, the blueprint needs to be updated. I have a, uh, a new version of this. So that's, that needs to be updated a bit. That's on this list here because, but the general, how this blueprint works with connect buffer processing, storage and visualization, that still, still holds true in my opinion. That's, Whenever I see this, this, this still holds true. Um, yeah, one thing that is missing here in the beginning, I currently prepare a, another uh, book that is available on my, on my page in, uh, next week is a, it's a quick start, uh, a project quick start guide that actually where I explain the difference between analytics and transactional pipelines. And I think that's important. That should go into the introduction here. So people understand these two areas where engineers work some work on the transactional side where there's some something coming in directly for the customer where like a you have a purchase from the customer these purchases come into the system need to get stored and on the other side maybe there's a customer who looks at the purchases again like stuff that is that is usually streaming in and then you have the other the analytic side where you're very often working with data warehouses where you're uh, where you're feeding the analysts or data or making it available for the analysts so i think that needs to needs to go in here who companies need that's also something i here in, in the last part i so i I'm explained here the the stages and the last part was a bit who actually our company is looking for. This changed, in my opinion, as well. This was very Spark heavy here. So I, I was mentioning Spark and people needing, uh, companies need people with Spark experience and so on. I think this needs to be more, more geared towards the cloud. Let me, let me write this actually down. Hey Joe, how's it going? Hi. Um, are there any IoT web pages you can add to data sources in the cookbook? I actually, don't we have something like that? Data sources. Do we have something like time series or something? Hmm. Maybe that's a good idea. Add something like time series, uh, IOT stuff. The question is always what, what is IOT? What, what defines IOT? Because a lot of times you don't get IOT data from companies, right? Companies keep the IOT data for themselves. They don't want to share it. Uh, so that's, that can be a bit tricky to, to actually do. That can be a bit tricky. Yeah, so th that's some some changes for the for the introduction. Make it less data science heavy because it's not engineer and scientists are not so closely connected. Um, remove or move the machine learning stuff. I think that that should go towards the advanced skill or, or in basics then. And the who companies needs that needs to be geared more towards the cloud because that's a big change that that I've seen over the years. Um, make this. I think I think you can you can agree on this. What do you think about multi cloud strategy for next year, twenty twenty three? So it mm, it depends. Very often. So it doesn't always make sense. Sometimes it makes sense if you have projects that use different clouds 
for the environment because like GCP has options where AWS doesn't have the options and therefore you tend to spread out your projects. But if you want to share data, you need to you know, do something hybrid or multi-cloud. Um, I think that works. It's always a bit complicated. I don't really like it that much. I think you should focus on one cloud and that's it. That's most of the time the, be the best case because naturally you're going to have experts in AWS or in GCP in your company. So why not leverage them fully instead of running into multiple clouds? Eh. But e if you would think about easily uh, exchanging data over files like cloud storage on GCP or uh, S3 on AWS, stuff like that, that that's easy. I think that's that's quite good. Otherwise, I don't I don't see it that much. It's let's say for low level exchange of data. I think so. So, yeah. Let, let's continue. Basic engineering skills. So, in the basic engineering skills, when we click on this here, so what did I have in there? I have in there uh, a bit about agile development software engineering culture i think that's that actually yeah that refers to some videos about at spotify or how a computer works data network transmission or, or networking computer networking security stuff linux docker cloud and security zone design um let's quickly see yeah the one thing here is in the basics, where's the learn to code? The learn to code here, this changed a lot over the last years is when I started with this, let's say four years ago, it was for me and what I've saw, it was very Java heavy. But in the past years, Python is the, is it turned around and it went all Python. So I'm, I think most of the stuff is Python. And I, therefore, I would look for Python and I would go with Python. So this needs to actually change this learn to code to give a bit of information on what to look for. Learn to Python. I could even link my course there and that I did. So also something I'm going to do is I'm going to send people not only to websites, I'm going to send them also to my academy, right? Because if they want to learn more, if they want to learn faster, then they can do that with the academy. Get familiar with Git. I think that's still very true. Shorten Agile rules. I learned over the years. I'm guessing Agile is quite Agile rules. Yeah, this is, a, I don't know. Sometimes I think it's too much blah, blah. And I, I don't like that. Remove learn how to how a computer works and data transmission. I think these. I'm actually not sure about this. What do you think? Is that important to keep in here? Basic engineering skills. It's usually this should be basic computer science skills or something. Should this should this be named right? That's maybe that's something to rename this. Uh, rename. If if we do that, then this can stay here. I think this is a more computer science thing here. Ah oh, shit! What was that? Heading one. Ah. I'm Mustafa again at my creation of data lake like formation. You don't talk about any type of migration to the cloud. Migration to the cloud is always a bit tricky, right? Because especially if you have a lot of data laying around already in your in your local data center it's a bit tricky um 
and it's also very stuff like this is very custom in my opinion so i i would not even know what to what to enter uh what to use here because it de it depends on what you have what do you like is working what do you like is working with console cdk CLA, cloud formation one project because many people confusing why terraform useful work in the cloud i'm not 100 percent sure what you mean here work with console is easy a lot of times working with the console is easy yeah that's true uh, but Personally, I'm also I'm whenever I, f I have a user interface, I'm user interface guy. So I'm going to switch to a user interface. Um, so Python heavy, shorten the agile stuff because it's very long. The, if we keep this basic computer science skills, then we could leave the how the computer works and uh, computer networking stuff there. Security zone design is, I think that's a bit more advanced. And then we come to the big, uh, to the big things, to the big problems here. The advanced skills, I think that's the big, big problems here, big problem area, because I think why, why a good data platform is important, that still holds true. That is, that's a thing that you, you need. Maybe I want to write something here and not have you listen to a very old episode of the podcast. Big data versus data science and analytics. So big data, I need to ban from this. Here and why big data, this the big data needs to go. That's, uh, that's not something I actually want to keep in the, in the, uh, in the cookbook. I think big data is dead, so maybe maybe write this differently. But generally, the 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 thing is, or the topics are still true. Planning is everything. That without good planning, you're going to fail with the with the amount of data we get right now, and with how this how the platforms are built up, um, ETL scaling scaling up scaling out it's this is very traditional what i write here about this is very traditional very hadoopy right that's also where i have hadoop platforms here and i wrote this here hadoop platforms um uh, the four v scaling out scaling up I, I think that needs to go and had the whole hadoop thing is outdated hadoop needs to needs to go from here so you see we're boiling down the cookbook because a lot of stuff is, is Hadoop needs to go. It's it's too old. A lot of people don't use Hadoop anymore. They go to the cloud. They use all kinds of other tools that are not cloud independent. So this needs to go. But then the general the areas here from the cookbook uh, from the from the blueprint connect buffer processing framework and storage visualization that still that still can stay here that still is i think that's still good rest apis focus on rest apis i have a course about that so why not mention this here and then data integration tools i think i need to mention a few of them here or make an overview of of tools because Right now, everybody is talking about Airflow, data integration tools like Airbyte, Fivetran, and so on. These are a very important Fluent D, I think, as well. These things are are important. These these are currently not in the cookbook, and that needs to go there. Uh, buffer. I think in the buffer. What did I have here in the buffer? I just had at Kafka here. Kinesis Cloud pops up. Kafka Kinesis pops up. Event Hub, for instance, is missing here for from from um, from Azure. Well, that's some stuff that actually I think should go in here. I, what did I write here about pops up? Ah, nothing. So there ne actually needs to be something here, right? Not just uh, a few Kafka commands. How to quickly set up Kafka? Yeah, there are a few 
There are holes in here everywhere. Processing framework at event driven versus scheduled because what did I have to have? I'm guessing in processing framework, I only have a lot of what did I have in here? Lambda Kappa architecture, batch processing, stream processing. Event driven with the schedule. Isn't this batch and stream processing? Why did I write this here? Because we we already have that here. Uh, I think yeah, MapReduce needs to go from here. I have a, a section about MapReduce and how MapReduce works. I, I that's that's not really relevant anymore. That needs to go. And Apache Spark, Spark fit to Hadoop, that stuff also. Nobody cares about Hadoop anymore, really. I I, I think some companies still use it, but it's it's not it's not not hip anymore and there are way more efficient tools to use so that actually needs to go make spark less hadoop heavy spark is still very important spark is 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 a great tool especially with data bricks it's very interesting but it's less should be less hadoop heavy because nowadays yeah you can connect spark to everything right focus more on software as a service tools like lambda or cloud functions, uh, bring in scheduling with Airflow and Cron. <laughs> yeah, Cron is, is something. Do I even have that here? Some little Lambda. I just had, oh, these links are actually broken. Um, yeah, so there that needs to, needs to have work. Move graph database to storage. Just, I don't know where, our graph database in here. Graph DB, yeah, of course, that needs to go somewhere else. Um, are you saving today's live? Yeah, of course, it's going to live on my YouTube. I'm, I'm not deleting lives, except I don't really like them. Then I'm going to delete the live streams. But this, this is is uh, staying here. I want to use these live streams for a bit of also for documentation from my side. What I think. Uh, what, what I'm thinking about, what I what I look for, what I'm trying to achieve or have achieved. So, yeah, this is this is going to stay. This is is going to. Before we move into the next thing here, there's a question, Mustafa. What do you think about new data engineering jobs like expert in Redshift, Glue? <sighs> I mean, Redshift uh, as a you have you always you always have these jobs that are specialized in certain things like Redshift or like ETL with Glue or pro data processing with Glue, but I personally don't think too much of this because it's for you it's a very narrow a narrow job it's a very narrow. Uh, knowledge you should know more than than glue or redshift so i i can see why people do this because they want to be experts or because in larger companies then you have somebody who works with the analytics data store with a warehouse and with basically with the redshift and the, that person's only job is to work on this or another person who's only doing processing with glue but I think this will get old for you very, very quickly if you only if you're only focusing on one of or two of these tools like Glue and Redshift. So I, I I don't like that a lot. I think this will get old very quickly for people. Yeah. In the storage, that's one thing that I that I don't do here in the storage a category i just basically show here data warehouse data lake uh, relational databases i wanted to add queries here and so on but there actually needs to be some information about transactional databases and analytical data stores 
it's very this is something very important that's also fits to what I talked earlier about right that you have these two type or two parts of a data platform you have the transactional part and you have the analytical part the transactional part is with transactional data stores with relational databases with NoSQL databases and the analytical part very often works either with uh, with actually file stores or with analytical analytical data stores like uh, Redshift or BigQuery or stuff. So that's something that I need to change here in the storage thing, and then give a few examples about this: MySQL, SQLite, and so on. NoSQL. For the NoSQL things, I need to remove here in in NoSQL. Yeah, I need to remove maybe HBase, keep that here, but HDFS stuff again. It's very Hadoop heavy. I wanna I wanna have this done or gone because that makes no sense. MongoDB, yes, MongoDB is still is still good. By the way, what do you think? I see there are still a lot of people watching. A comment. What do you think? Would it be interesting to do? videos or introductions about certain tools because there are a ton of tools out there right there are a lot of tools would it be interesting to have youtube videos and also here in the cookbook information about about all the tools that we that we use as as engineers like so we we look into data stores a video about mongodb a video about cassandra how these work something about uh, message queues like Kafka and so on. What do you think? Would that be interesting? Just keep like s small videos, five minutes maybe, not super super large, but a steady stream of of giving you the idea how this, what is it, how does it work, and how does it fit in a data platform? Like go down, go into the comment section. I think it's always on the right on YouTube and on on uh, LinkedIn. Put that in the comment. Would you like this? Or do you think that's overkill and we we don't really need that? Come on. I, I, I give you five seconds here or a few seconds to do this. Write it in the comments. And then we continue. Small video, super idea. Okay. The architecture and core components are much more important than the tools. I think more than videos, the text is still the king. Yeah. Maybe have a combination here about tools and the and architecture because the architecture reviews there are a lot of architecture review videos coming we have content for almost 50 videos right now so i just need to record these things i have a lot of architecture stuff where you can learn uh, also from big companies not just not these small small joke companies yeah so that's that's something i actually want to want to do in this Data warehousing, add a bit more Redshift, add Delta Lake, data governance. We talked about this earlier. Visualization, BI tools, Streamlit, dashboards, dashboards like Grafana. I actually don't know what I have in here. Android, design mobile apps, dashboards. Okay, that needs to be stuff. There needs to be a lot of stuff done here because it's almost empty, right? What do you think AWS users to get expert data uh, called AWS? I'm not sure what you mean here. What do you think AWS users do to be expert with service? Well, it's, it's, to become an expert in this stuff is work, 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 um, learn stuff work with the tools, 
use the documentation, maybe do a course on a specific tool if you want to become good with Redshift, maybe search for a Redshift course. But that's the way of becoming an expert in these things. It's Can you also update and add more stuff in data sources retail, for example, there's only one website. So what you can do, Ednan, if, uh, because this is, this is on GitHub, you can uh, either you create an issue or a pull request and just put it in there and we can, we can, uh, we can merge this then into the, into this and have, have the stuff in there. Uh, yeah, but I think it's a, it's a good idea to look for uh, retail examples. Yeah, I think there isn't there one in there. There should be actually one in there in the data sources. Retail. What's that? Is there, no. What's that here? Hmm. Okay, I I know I was thinking about e-commerce. Oh. We are like do videos of ten minutes with architecture for uh, explaining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something. Like if you if you're interested in these kind of videos, check out my YouTube. Uh, channel Mustafa, you're already on YouTube. I have a few videos uh, where I review architecture, and this kind of videos I ha I'm going to create more of them. So these, there are coming more of these videos, additional to the live streams, or sometimes yeah, a live stream and a video. Hands on, most likely I'm going to remove the hands-on course because it's not finished and I, I don't like it. I wanted to do more, but then as always, I time uh, yeah, didn't finish this, didn't have enough time. Maybe I'm going to link here to the courses that I have in the academy because it's very, exp very helpful. What I do, these, these courses are good for transactional pipelines, for uh, analytical pipelines. So maybe showcase here in the hands-on stuff or showcase uh, um, architecture stuff here. Showcase uh, projects. Let me write this actually down. Showcase projects from the academy. Yeah. Case studies. What's the case studies thing? Yeah, case studies is one thing here. I have here a list of case studies that I actually found, but these are very old. All no, right, the the Upwork thing is is that even is that even a thing here? Like, that's from 2018. 2018. Like this is all, this is four years old. So yeah, I don't know how relevant this still is. This PDF is, isn't even available anymore, so I need to check these. This is from 2019. Uh, so, I don't know if, if uh, <laughs> there's so much work in there. <laughs> It's crazy. Interview questions there. There needs to be more and the maybe I'm going to drop this. I need to go through the data sources and check out the data sources. Yeah, and books and courses. I I know I have my uh, I have more books and maybe I need to refresh the the affiliate link. I need to put Cho's here Cho Chores. I need to put Cho's book into my Amazon store actually. Yeah. Courses at a sales pitch for the academy. So if people are really interested in this, then they, they can jump over. Uh, take a look. As I said, it, this thing needs a lot of work. Uh, like, I think that's, yeah, a lot of stuff is very old. Yep. 
Okay, uh, so that's for me. That's that's what I want to do with this cookbook. It, it needs a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff needs to get dropped. A lot of stuff needs to have more uh, details. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a long process. Let's see if I have the time for it. Most likely the first day phase is going to yeah, make it or clean it up drop the stuff that I actually don't like. Yeah. Okay. Um, so much for that. If you have any questions, just drop them, drop them in here. Uh, if you have questions after this, drop it into uh, either drop it into the comments of YouTube. Or let me quickly pitch our pitch our discord so when you go to my when you go to my uh, website to my academy learndataengineering.com when you scroll down here uh, there's a link to my youtube channel here's the link to the cookbook and also to our discord server and because we have a discord server this discord is used not as much as I like to, but I'm going to, I'm working on getting more stuff on there and trying to have more discussions there. Right now, the Discord, there are people on Discord. So, as you see right now, they're in this normal chat here. There are almost 50 people live. And I know now it's 588 offline. So, yeah, there are there are discussions in here you can post we have a public uh, area and we have a members area for academy members so take a look at the discord if you want to get in touch with me if you have ideas if you want to get in touch with the community and then yeah see each other next time i think i'm going to be back here on monday or on tuesday i don't know exactly now but i'm as i said i'm going to try to to keep these live streams coming and get you a bit more information yeah the big thing was so what do we take away from this hadoop is not that important anymore more look more towards the cloud engineering is not necessarily connected that close to data science uh, yes you need data you need engineering for data science but you can also do engineering without the scientists without machine learning and so on yeah thanks for being here it was great chatting with you it was great showing you the stuff thanks for all the comments uh, if you're on youtube hit the like button for this so the algorithms know that this is good and if you would write a comment that would also really really help and then yeah, see each other next time on monday same time i'm always trying to go here 5 p.m european time 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern time in the U.S. and 7 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. Yeah. See you later.